and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve complex force problems on a ramp in physics and as a foundation for AP Physics as well. And I'll talk you through all of the strategies. I've talked through similar strategies and done multiple screencasts in the past that address all of the skills we're going to be using today. And I'll try to remember to put up links to those skills at various points. But I do want to let you know that we're going to work through this with five straightforward steps for how to solve a complex force problem. And in this case, it's going to be on a ramp. The first thing I want to point out for ramp problems is that we're going to need to tilt our axis. So our x-axis and our y-axis, here's our x and here's our y, they can be tilted. As long as they are still at 90 degrees to each other, there is no problem with tilting an axis. In fact, it makes life a lot easier if we do tilt the axis so that the x-axis is in the direction of motion or possible motion. And so that's what we're doing here. So let's take a look at this problem that I made up. So it says, Melanie E. has had it with the beauty of Washington State, and she has rented a moving van to move to California. She's ready for college. One of the moving boxes has 25 kilograms of mass, and she pushes the box horizontally with a force of 110 newtons up the ramp, which is 15 degrees above the horizontal. The box moves at a constant velocity on its way up the ramp. What is the mu k between the box and the ramp? If you don't know what a mu k is, you should take a look at my screencast on introduction to friction concepts. I'll put a link to that in the upper right right now. So let's start by figuring out what forces are on this free body diagram. So what is a force you can put on a free body diagram? And hints, if a physics teacher ever asks you this and you don't know how to do these problems, just yell out gravity in the beginning because you're going to be right and then you won't have to answer any more questions in front of the class probably. So yes, the answer is gravity, the force due to gravity here. And that is going to be pulling straight down. Gravity doesn't care that something's on a ramp. All right, so what's another force? Another one would be the force applied and another one that is implied is friction. We know that there's friction because it mentions mu k. And there is one last force that we need to worry about. Sometimes students have trouble remembering this one. It's the normal force. And so that is the reaction force that is perpendicular to the surface involved. I've done a screencast on that. I'll put a link up in the upper right for that as well if you're not sure how to deal with the normal force. All right, so we've gone ahead and drawn our free body diagram for this. I do want to say at the outset that if you're dealing with a problem that has an angle on the ramp as well, like someone is on a ramp but they're pulling with a rope at a second angle to the ramp itself, I'm going to talk you through how to do this problem as well at the end of today's lesson. So everything I say here for this lesson will apply to this scenario. It's just that we need to tack on a 15 second explanation of how to deal with this extra wrinkle over here of having a second vector at the end of today's lesson. Hang in there even if you're looking at a problem like this and wondering how to do it. All right, so first we're going to review our strategies for solving a complex force problem. I've gone over these previously, and we're going to slightly modify these because we're working with a ramp situation. So our first strategy and our second strategy kind of go together. It's right what the problem gives you in terms of variables and the x and the y axis separated out, like Physics problems are word problems, so you need to translate that into physics variables, what they are equal to, that kind of thing. And you're also going to be drawing your free body diagram. We've already gone ahead and done our free body diagram. I do want to say, though, that the modification to our previous set of strategies, five strategies I gave you, was now that we're dealing with a ramp, we need to tilt the axis. The other three strategies are exactly the same as we've discussed before. You're going to solve for your components and whatever else you can at the beginning of the problem. There are going to be things that we can solve for that are like easy pickings and components. You'll take care of those. The fourth strategy is to use the sum of the forces strategy in the x and the y axis. I've gone over this. And this is a really important strategy that I'll put a link to in the upper right. And finally, you're going to bring the x and the y axis together with the friction equation because it has the magical ability to draw on the x and the y axis at the same time. All right, and so let's go ahead and use these strategies with the problem. We know our force applied is going to be 110 newtons. We know our mass is 25 kilograms. And the rest will be easier if we can see the free body diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and show that. Our FGX is a component of this force due to gravity, and that's something we're going to have to solve for. So we don't know what it is, but we do know that it's something we have to solve for. What else do we have in the x? We've got an fk value. And let's think also about acceleration. It's not a force, but it's a key concept that will come into our calculations. So what's true about the acceleration in the x? The acceleration in the x is zero. 
And the reason for that is because the velocity up here is a constant velocity. And so those may be the two most important words in this entire problem. Whenever you see constant velocity, I want you to think that the acceleration in that axis is going to be zero. And that's important. I'll show you why that's important in a moment. If you take a look in the y-axis, we know our normal forces in the y-axis. Our FGY is in the y-axis. And that's it in terms of forces. We also have an acceleration the y of zero. How do I know that the acceleration the y is zero? I know that because the object is not like magically floating up in the atmosphere, accelerating faster and faster like a rocket or into the ramp surface itself, down into the ground. It's not moving in the y-axis at all, so therefore it's not accelerating in the y-axis at all. So notice this is not 9.81 meters per second squared in the negative direction, because it's not being dropped. It's not in free fall. And even if it was, our y is no longer straight down. All right, so we've done a bit of our preliminary work. Now we need to solve for anything that we can spot in the beginning that would be helpful to solve for as well as our components. I will say that I ran out of room and so this top of this vector is kind of cut off, but you get the idea. I do want to address a misconception. I want you to think which of these two drawings right here is the correct drawing for taking this vector and making it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So the left drawing is correct or the right drawing is correct. What do you think? And it turns out that the left drawing is correct. And the reason for this is that FGX is actually in the x-axis. Here it's parallel to the x-axis, but that works. Whereas this FGX, this vector right here, is not parallel to the x-axis. This is a common mistake that students will make when they're first learning how to do ramp style problems. So please don't make that mistake. By the way, I do want to say I have done a whole screencast on why that 15 degree angle is the same as that theta angle down below, and I will put a link to that screencast in the upper right right up now if you are not sure why that is the case. All right, so moving on. What's one of the things that we can solve for early on that would be easy to tackle? Well, that would be the force due to gravity, right? We do need to know the force due to gravity, and so you would just say Fg is equal to Mg. You plug in your values and you end up with your force due to gravity there. All right, well, what else should we do? Well, we should solve for our components, right? This is a vector that's not completely in the x-axis. We gotta solve for this component here and this component here. So we're gonna do that relatively quickly because this should be easy for you at this stage. All right, so this is our general sine equation. We're gonna use our terms right here, plug in our values, and we end up with 63.4 Newtons. Somehow I think the order of these two images got switched, but you get the idea. And we'll go ahead and update this information over here. So this is how I would solve the problem. I would get a list of the x-axis terms, the y-axis terms that I need to solve. And as I get more information, I would add in more information. Now we know what our fgx is. Let's do the same thing for fgy. You're going to have your cosine value, and you show your work here, plug in your numbers, and you end up with 237 newtons and we can go ahead and update our information over here. The next step is going to be to use the sum of the forces strategy. In this case, we're going to do the x and the y axis. Let's start with the x axis here. The first part of this strategy is to do the sum of the forces, literally sum up all of the forces or components of forces that are completely in the x axis, not partially, but completely in the x axis. And that's what we have here. The next step is to do Newton's second law. And so the sum of the forces in the x-axis is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. This is something you're going to have to memorize here. And then what would you guess we do with this? Well, we set these two things equal to each other, right? We've got some of the forces in the x is equal to something. Some of the forces in the x is equal to something else. Let's set the something and the something else equal to each other and see what happens. That's the strategy. So you do that, and at this point it's appropriate to ask ourselves... Is our acceleration zero? Is our acceleration zero in the x-axis for this case? And the answer is yes, it is zero. And it's zero because the crate is going to be moving with a constant velocity. So if we take a look at what we know and what we don't know, we can isolate for our fk. We do know our fgx and we do know our fa. And so we can put this by itself, isolate for that, and go ahead and plug in our numbers and solve for the force due to kinetic friction. 
And then I can go ahead and update my information over here to keep track of what I know and what I don't know. All right, so we're going to do the same thing in the y-axis now, the sum of the forces strategy in the y-axis. So the sum of the forces is equal to literally the sum of the forces that are completely in the y-axis. So you list those out and add them together. And then you also say the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law. And then what do we do? We set them equal to each other, and we ask ourselves, all right, what's going on with the acceleration? In this case, our acceleration is going to be zero because the object is not accelerating downwards or upwards magically into the atmosphere. And so that whole term drops out. And the one thing that we don't know is essentially Fn here. Typically, we don't know it at this point. And then we can go ahead and just say, well, we know what Fgy was, so we know Fn is equal to 237 newtons. And we're going to go ahead and update our list of known values to reflect our new information. And the last part of the strategy is to bring it all together because the friction equation has this amazing ability to draw on the x-axis and the y-axis. It's actually very rare in physics to have something that can do this. And the question that we've been asked is to solve for the mu k value. Well, let's go ahead and isolate for mu k. We plug in our values and we get our answer here. And that's how you would go ahead and work through this in a stepwise fashion. As long as you follow these strategies and take it step by step and are careful as you do this, there's absolutely no reason why you cannot do these problems and do them well. And the last thing I want to talk about is something that I did mention. Well, what if you had a harder problem? I would say everything that I have said up to this point completely applies. It's just that at the stage where we have to break these down into components, you have to break this down into a components for FAY and FAX. Use sine and cosine to be able to solve for that. And make sure you put those in as forces when you do your sum of your forces strategy in the X and the Y axis. So all it is is just a couple extra steps, really. It's not that big of a deal to be able to do a little bit more complex problem like this. The last thing I will say is you should be careful. There are two different angles here. There's the angle of the hill or the ramp or whatever it is. And then the angle at which it's being pulled, let's say, from like someone pulling a piece of luggage up a ramp at an airport or something like that. In any case, we have just gone over how to do some of the hardest problems in all of first semester physics, typically for a physics class. So if you understood this, congratulations. Good job. Stick around. There are going to be more problems we're going to be doing in this unit and for future units. If you have any comments, then please let me know down below. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.